What's going on, world? This is your girl, Marky. And today I am, well, I'm always excited, as you well know. <laughs> However, I remember back in the day when I was trying to figure Snapchat out and I had the young girl, the shampoo uh, lady at the beauty salon <laughs> tell me she was like 2021. 20, and one of the very first people that I followed is my guest today. And that would be Jason Frazier. What's going on, Jason? Oh, uh, you know, just uh, having some fun uh, doing podcasts and videos and everything else. Just ha just enjoying what I'm doing. You know, what's kind of funny. I remember how I actually found you. There was an article about the top realtors on Snapchat, mm -hmm. uh, real estate professionals on yep. Snapchat. And there was a young lady from Chicago. It was you. It was uh, Chelsea. It was mm -hmm. uh, Michael out of New York. And yep. I started following everybody because to me, it just wasn't uh, intuitive, right? Yeah. Um, as I let people know, I'll be 50 on my next birthday and I'm not a tech native. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> But I'm going to figure this thing out. Right. Yeah. And so I know that you believe in video. You're very dedicated to the world of real estate. Mm -hmm. And you, I read your bio. A lot of great stuff. You talk about impact marketing. Yeah. What is it that you do over at Shred Media? So I'm the chief creative officer at Shred Media, and uh, what we focus on is championing the local expert. There's a lot of, and that's both in real estate and mortgage. My background happens to be on the mortgage side of the real estate business, but also had a, having family members that uh, were agents as well. Um, so it's been a life. It's just been I was born into the world. I just hadn't worked in it, worked in it until about 2009. Um, but for, for what I focus on at Shred is, is really when we talk about attention and impact is really helping, you know, uh, we're an agency, so more of, uh, you know, big lenders, big companies help them with, uh, with all sorts of things like brand messaging, marketing, uh, social media, just kind of more of just, you know, their story of their brand, how they can attract, depending, because everyone wants something different. But what I focus on when it comes to attention and impact is that right now our our industry as it as it sits is very commoditized, right? You know, agents are generally putting out the same stuff, loan officers are putting out the same stuff. So what we look at is like like anyone could come along and say, hey, you should be on Facebook or you should be on Instagram or whatever. That's just the easiest thing to do. Or this is how the text you know use text messaging for scripts and whatever. And that's because that's generally what everyone wants to know about. But really, how are you going to stand out? How are you going to be memorable? How are you going to create what my friend David Greenspan calls mindshare. How are you going to do that with your brand? And, and really what you do is, is attention is the first part. Attention is Josh Pitts, who's the founder of Shred Media, he says this all the time, is attention is currency. Attention is currency in 2019, 2020, and it's going to be for the foreseeable future. But then it, attention is the first part, but how do you really create an impact with your messaging, with your brand so that you stick, right? It's one thing because, you know, in our, our industry, it can be very transactional, uh, but how do you make that brand stick? How do you stand out? So when the topic of real estate comes up, you're the first person that people think of. And it's not because you're just, you did a great job. Look, there's a ton of people that do a great job. And I, I, I know for you, probably in your life, there's people that have done a great job for you. Same with me. But do they stick out when that topic comes up? Was it so memorable that I'm thinking about them? So that's what we focus on on Tread is, is really, you know, we, you know, we're an agency, but when it comes down to the industry, we do anything, work with partners and everything that's going to champion that local expert so that it takes them, you know, the online lenders, the fintech lenders, um, you know, fintech and real estate, uh, online real estate shops, but basically giving anyone that wants to learn and wants to really champion their local brand is uh, giving them an, a path to, to becoming that local expert and championing their message so that they are the ones that end up winning in the end. Okay. So this is what I want to give us a persona, right? Yep. Um, in the world of real estate, we are an industry that there are more women than men. Yep. Uh, the average age toggles between as low as 52 to 54. Mm -hmm. um, it, the income is on the lower end for what you would anticipate based on all the visuals we see in our industry. So we're coming up on the end of the year and planning for t a successful 2020. Mm -hmm. If you were talking to that woman today, that 54 year old woman who was not a tech native, right? Um, really doesn't want to embrace technology, probably starts her sentences with those millennials, right? So mm -hmm. we already know we got a little issue going on here. What would you tell her to do today? What are you telling people to do today to change 
the outlook for 2020? What's one thing that you see as a problem in our industry that we don't do, don't do right, don't do enough, that you think that if we took this, um, this one step, it could change our business? So, I mean, there's, I mean, there's kind of two parts of that. The first one, cause it's really, if like, if you don't want to do it, that's, that's a different conversation, but really like <laughs> when it comes down to it is, is you got to ask yourself this really like one is I'm, is this my, is this my profession, right? Is this just something I'm doing? You know, that's, that's what I'd say. The first question is, is this your profession and are you in this business for legacy, right? If the answer okay. is yes to both of those, then get over not wanting to be about technology because you have to be relevant. If you're, if this is your profession and this is, you know, this is your legacy and this career, or, you know, this business that you're in, then you have to get over that because you have to be relevant, right? And only to, if you're going to be relevant to today's consumer, not just millennials, but boomers and everyone else, that's not like millennials are the only one going online, right? I mean, look at you and I, right? We're not, you know, we use social media, you know, we're not millennials, but that's the thing is that, <laughs> Is that th that's what it is. It's like, look, you either want to be relevant to today's consu consumer, not demographic, today's consumer. Either you want to be relevant to them or you don't. It's a simple question. If it's yes, then this is, and then this goes to the second part of, of my answer. And that is something that I talk about to agents all the time. In fact, you know, just, just, just did this in, in Las Vegas to, you know, probably about a, a couple hundred agents, but really is about um, creating awareness of your brand and using Facebook, spending $2 a day on Facebook, building awareness of who you are in that market, right? Because usually, and look, I'm, I'm, t I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, but when I talk to an agent and I say, and if I ask them, I say, look, you're an agent. What is the difference between me using you as a local agent or me using someone like Redfin, right? And the, usually the first answer I get is I know the local market, right? But then when you look at their marketing, it's, it's probably the last thing they even talk about is their local market. They're talking about just listings, just sold, things about me, why you want to hire me, 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 me. You can't do that. You got to build awareness of your brand and you do that by focusing on uh, local uh, content or what we call interest-based content, right? So you talk about things that are happening in Vegas. You talk about the Raiders moving in there, the new stadium. You talk about this. And I have agents successfully deploying this strategy over and over again. So if, you're, if, if someone that doesn't want to get on it first, again, that first question is like, look, do you want to be relevant or don't? If you do, this is how everyone should be starting is because awareness drives decision. It's something I spoke at at Inman in Las Vegas, um, you know, just a, a few months ago in, in July. And that's what the, our presentation was, is like, look, awareness drives decision. And how do you do that? You spend $2 a day on Facebook every single day. It's super simple. You're going to be spending probably less than $7 a week when it comes down to it. And you're going to be getting thousands. And, and each week, you're going to be getting thousands of views. You're going to be getting a couple thousand in reach. And you're, only sp and you're spending less than $7. It's better than using a radio ad. It's better than using a billboard. It's, but you need to build that awareness first so that when you do put out some calls to action, when you do put out some lead generation based ads or you're on Facebook or they see, they see you around town, do you want to be that person they see everywhere? And the best thing to do that is by building awareness. So they see your face, they know your name, they know your voice, and it absolutely, absolutely 100% works. Now, you know what? Those were two of the sexiest questions I've ever heard. <laughs> and I'm going to give you credit because I will be asking those questions. <laughs> Is this your profession? Yep. And I tell agents all the time, secret agents don't get found. Okay. Yep. And the next one is, are you in this business for legacy? Because if you are, then this is a business and yep. you have to acquire new skills. Yep. Now, I want to dive a little deeper. Yep. $2,000, $2 a day. Yep. What does $2 a day look like? Uh, on on Facebook, is this an ad? Is it a boost? It, is there any tips you want to give them with this two dollars a day? I mean, that sounds that's cheaper than my coffee. Yeah. And, and look, and that's even if you got all black coffee, a large all black coffee at McDonald's is probably hitting right at two dollars a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's and that's what we talk about. So yeah, I'll, 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 I'd love to go deeper into this. And so basically, think about this. So this is this is how it would play out. Is you're you're an agent, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to use an example of a of an agent in Las Vegas because I mentioned you know having this conversation. I mean, we do this everywhere. But um, think about the Raiders Stadium, right? So and I'll, and actually an agent, a friend, uh, Danny Fee. You may know him um, or not, but he's he's a Las Vegas real estate agent, and so he's the one that's doing this strategy all the time. He goes and and does a vertical video. And it's important to do vertical because they don't look like ads in the newsfeed, 
that's the thing is that everyone it we're being programmed to scroll past nice looking horizontal videos because they look like ads right and of course they say sponsored on it but when they're vertical they look and you're talking to the camera they don't look like an ad it's an ad a hundred percent an ad but it doesn't look like an ad because you're just sitting there vertically on a phone just like people do when they're doing stories people when they're walking around whatever there's stuff going on in the background it does not look like an ad so it get and it's and it's a high percentage that those get viewed by like 85 percent over horizontal right so it's not like this isn't a guesstimate this isn't like my thesis or theory or anything this is just what's proven out there right so you you're looking at your phone it's vertical and he's just talking about the raiders he's saying hey hey just so you guys you know hey uh, look at the construction's coming on. It's opening in 2020. This is what it looks like right now. But I'm a Dolphins fan. I live in Las Vegas. So I feel the need to become a Raiders fan now because we've never had a local team. And this is basically the, you know, the, the subject of his video, right? And so then he, and then that was the video he posted. So as an agent, you would post something, again, interest-based content. And at Shred Media, we call it focused content on what not what you want, but focus the content on what the consumer and the consumer cares about themselves morning, noon, and night, right? That's all the consumer cares about. That's what your content needs to be around. So you do your content based off of what consumers like, what they love and where they live. We call it the three L's. You focus your content on that. And just like, again, the, the being, um, you know, the Raiders, uh, the Raiders stadium in the background, that's obviously a, a market play. It's obviously where they live. He's doing the video, he's talking into it. And then, um, what you're going to do is you're, and it, and it doesn't have to be long. It's 60 seconds, 90 seconds, really simple. And it's not a promotion. It's not, Hey, if you're thinking about buying, get that out. This is not what this strategy is about. The strategy is about building awareness of you now. And, and, and I should have said this in the beginning. It is not a lead generation tactic now. However, and which was funny is so you may you know do you know sue pinky uh Benson? yes uh, right? and i know so, pinky florida yeah, uh, yeah you know pinky right so uh -huh. she was actually uh speaking at inman as well and a couple panels before me and she had mentioned she uses my strategy and she gets leads from that now even i'm not and again I, i'm saying it's not a lead generation tactic but yes you can get leads from doing this because again it's about building awareness it's simple video tactics just to get your face in front of it and you're not selling anything so you're doing that and then you could do one of two things this is going to be probably one of one of two reasons why you would ever boost a video is that it's you do that you're doing it on your business facebook page and then you could boost it but as always with anything facebook related i always recommend going into the ads manager so you can be well defined and who you're sending that video to but again this is going to be the easiest facebook ad you've ever run and and we're, we're you know in the real estate industry and mortgage we're under the special ad category now because of all the things with hud and the lawsuit and all that other stuff so it sucks running facebook ads right now just because we can't be as focused as we want to do but this is the thing is that you're not choosing demographics you're not choosing um zip codes or anything else, what you're doing is you're doing a 25 mile radius around the center of your market, whatever that happens to be, general store, gas station, city hall, whatever. You're doing 25 mile radius around the center of that, of your market. And then you're running a video views ad for either a dollar to $2 a day. I recommend $2 just because you're going to get more, you know, bang for your buck. Um, but you, you, you run that and you run it for a week right? And then you see how it does. And again, this is just building awareness. You just want people to watch the video, right? And what we're seeing on average, now I, I don't have Danny's numbers in front of me, but they're insane. But on average, what we see when we when I see loan officers or real estate agents actually deploy the strategy, they're generally spending um, anywhere from seven to $14 a week, but they're getting anywhere from uh, 1200 video views plus 2300 reach plus comments and shares and everything else. And so generally on average, it's about 2,300 people that you're reaching about 1,200 views. And on average, you're spending about $7 a week, right? But it could be as much up to 14. So that is all that you're doing, again, depending on your daily ad spend to build awareness of your brand. And just think about this, when, when you're doing this for video views, right? Like th these are people that are watching your video. They're seeing your face. They're hearing your voice. They're seeing what you're talking about. They're seeing, they're, they're identifying you with local parts of the town that they live in. Right. And so you do that for a week and then you do another video for another week and then another video and another video. Now the cool thing about this is that you're doing that you're spending, let's say you're, you're spending $7 a week. That's nothing. Like you said, you're spending more than that on coffee a day, right? Like this is, this is a long-term play, but the cool thing from a strategy standpoint is then you could go back into Facebook and then run like a call to action ad eventually, right? Build awareness first, 
but then run a call to action that has them looking at a listing, an open house or something else. And you could actually target those people that watch videos, right? So that's ah. how, that's where you get into this. And again, you still don't need to do demographics. You still don't need to do age or anything else. And this is the one thing that I hear agents all, well, I don't want 13 year olds looking at my stuff. Guess what? 13 year olds aren't on Facebook. So don't worry about it. The people, your audience, <laughs> the people that you want to see their video are on Facebook and they're, don't worry about the age. I, that's the, it's the first thing I get. Well, what about, I don't want to choose 18 year olds. Then I get it from like a logical standpoint, but then let's like be real. How many 18 year olds do you know that are on Facebook every day? Not, they're on TikTok. They're, you know, on Instagram story. That's where they're at. At, right. So don't worry about that stuff. Just worry about that. You want people to see your face and see your brand. And yes, there may be some low twenties, mid 20 people, but that's a good market to build. If you're again, are you, is this your profession and, and you're in this business for legacy? Legacy. If you're long, in that for legacy, time. guess what? Those 25 year olds, they don't just stop at 25. They eventually have birthdays and grow older and stuff like that. Be the people that, you know, be someone that they remember because you're talking about stuff that they care about. You know, what's kind of funny when my son was in college, he did not like comment or share or anything on Facebook. At the moment he graduated and he wanted to be viewed as a peer. Yep. Then he's now interacting every single day on Facebook, but it yep. took him to get to 23 and a college degree before there was any public interaction because in college, it's not cool to interact with us. Yep. But when you join, when you become a working man, mm -hmm. <laughs> now nah, it's cool. Yep. So yeah, you're right. They're not, uh, they're not. And I have a, a 12 year old. He hasn't said anything about Facebook, but I know yep. he went and got him an Instagram account. Yeah. You know, and they know how to set it up without yeah. you knowing. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm loving that. There are some changes here uh, that I'm seeing that I'm going to have to make to my business. I love vertical video. Yep. I tell agents, I think that they should create one minute of vertical video content every single day just to remain relevant mm -hmm. in the different uh, story feeds. If not, you're not going to have a presence there, yep. period. Um, and so now to take that video, you know what I'm thinking? Because we're at that time of the year, I'm thinking about all of the Thanksgiving, where you buy your turkeys. I'm thinking Christmas Absolutely. trees. I'm thinking Christmas tree disposal. I'm thinking every activity yep. that people have a question about, you could become that local resource. Yes. Okay. That's, and that's right on. In fact, one of one of the people in our masterminds that have gotten the most out of this was she did this for where to find where to the best uh, places to view fireworks from on Fourth of July. So it's so right off to your point of like tree disposal. Uh, tree farms, pumpkin patches. I mean, obviously we're past October, but like, you know, pumpkin patches, you know, we, in Utah, we have a lot of snow. So like best places to go sledding. This is the thing is being that local resource. And here's the kicker, right? Like if you're an agent and loan officer, you know, it's probably for the most part, you're, you're going to get banned if you try to do any type of self-promotion in local Facebook groups. This is not that. So if you want to, if you want to be able to post relevant content that people will actually mm. share and, and contact you and actually not get banned out of a Facebook group or not get your post deleted is share this. Now, the thing is you just have to be careful. Do not talk about buying or selling or anything. Just look, you're an agent. It's from me from your business page. If you're branding, right, they're going to see that you're an agent, right? This is the way that they know the person, right? Know you like you trust you is a thing in our business for a reason. Have them know you for being the local expert, right? So when you say you're the local expert, you're the local expert. So right with what you said, Mark, he was about, you know, the tree disposal and stuff, be that resource. Like, and you could get this information anywhere, just Google it and then just do a video based off of what you're reading, right? Like you don't have to, you know, sit down and do a ton of research and stuff like that. Just, you know, the local news station is going to have something on that, you know, local community pages, but then you get to share this into local groups. And what we're finding is not only that, but when they're doing this boost, people are sharing it into the local groups organically. So then you get a push from that too. So this is how you get seen by everyone. And this is how you tr have a true omnipresence. It isn't about talking about real estate. It's a talking about what people care about and that's what they live and, and what affects their daily lives. Wow. I love it. And, and I mean, and it comes back to what you said in the first place, champion in, as a local expert. Correct. When we think about content, uh, it seems to be one of the hardest things for real estate professionals to come up with. Now, we've just talked about all these great local things, and then they'll sit there and say, well, Marky, what should I post? Mm -hmm. Is there any resource that you have that tells them, because some of them want you to tell them what to post, um, 
that might have those basic, like, I guess, 365 things uh, to post as a real estate professional. Actually, that would make a great blog post <laughs> in, your local, in your local marketplace. I know that Dale Chumley um, from Washington, I remember when he had 365 things to do, the Clark County Guide. And we were talking about this the other day because he never talked about real estate not once mm -hmm. but he talked about the shoe shine shop his uh, favorite thai restaurant yep. um the best dry cleaner it was all a community resource and what's funny i want to say that was 2011 2012 some of the places that he referenced their only online visibility is because dale talked about them so he is definitely that 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 local expert. Heck, he's now uh, either the past president or the current president of uh, Washington uh, State. So we talked about video. What what do you see? Uh, what's your prediction for video in 2020? So you know, I think I think video is always going to be important, right? You know, having that because I mean, look, we're all living our online lives. We're on social media. It's good to watch other people, especially with TikTok and seeing how much that's blown up. And that to me, that's the new Snapchat. I, I'm on TikTok pretty much every every day. Um, I haven't done a lot of content on it, but I'm really just kind of learning and seeing what people are putting out and whatnot. And I th and I, then I see other people trying to put out content like they would like on Instagram stories and not understanding like it's a totally different platform. People don't go on to watch stories on TikTok. They got to watch to laugh really what it's like. It's about skits and lip syncing and just doing funny stuff. Um, but video is obviously always going to be important. And so I think video is going to be even more uh, as far as if you're look, speaking of algorithms on like social media platforms, obviously YouTube's huge. Um, but Facebook, they, they're they putting a premium on video. Instagram obviously is putting a premium on video. I mentioned TikTok, LinkedIn with LinkedIn Live now and all that other good stuff. They're putting a premium on video. So video is still going to be huge. It's, it's still what people are going to, you know, look at to, to, you know, have that, that thumb stopping content video, some sort of imagery that's always going to be important. Uh, so if you haven't been doing video and this is the, one of those things is like, look, it, it's not like this is new video has been important for, for a while years. And, and if you're just dipping your toe into it, um, you, you need to get in there because eventually, just like with anything, it gets too loud, especially in our space, right? Once, once a, you know, a few popular real estate agents are doing anything, then everybody's doing it. We see it with like the viral videos that go around with someone lip syncing to some, you know, song and making it sound for real estate, then everybody's doing it, right? And then same, and same on the mortgage side. It's, it, that's just the way that we do things in our industry. Um, but, um, but there is a chance for you to go and kind of make your own mark, but you have to, you have to be doing it. Like you have to get comfortable doing it. And the one thing that we talk about all the time is look, I have a face for radio. So I could be very confident in what I'm going to tell you is that, look, if you're, uh, if you meet clients, guess what? That's how you look, right? So if you don't, you know, if you don't like how you look on video, then you don't have, you don't, then you're not going to like how you look in real life because it's the same thing, right? Like that's the thing is that's how you look, right? That's how you sound. I hate listening to my voice on, on podcasts and stuff because I, it's just always been a weird thing to me, but I had to get over it. Like me doing video, I had to get over that. Like I had to realize like if I, if again, asking myself, do I really want to make an impact? Do I really, is this my legacy? Am I going to be in this business? If so, I need the brand. I need to do this. So I need to be on video. I need to get over that fear of being on video. Look, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fluffy guy, you know, so I'll give that to the Gabriel, right? I'm, I'm not, you know, the, the fit guy, you know, I'm not, you know, you know, I always make this joke when I'm speaking and I'm, and I use this to try to just kind of disarm the audience a little bit about, you know, people, cause I know there's people out that are overweight that don't like the way they look. They don't like the way they're close fit. I could totally identify with all of that. So I said, look, I, look, guys, I said, look, Magic Mike isn't coming to film me, cast me in their next movie, right? Like, so I know that about myself. So you just have to get over it, right? You know, at least, you know, unless you have a, you know, a fetish of some kind. But other than that, like, you're, you're not, you're not getting the fluffy guy in Magic Mike, right? But so you just, you just got to get over that because people, look, the people you're dealing with, they're not fit. They're not coming out of an Abercrombie and Fitch commercial either, right? Like, they're, 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 they're going to be like you. And there's where that commonality comes in. And this is the one thing that I always try to stress with everyone. And this is about the lighting. This is about trying to be perfect and all this other stuff is consumers identify with imperfection. That's rule number one. Like they don't identify 
with private jets. I mean, they may want that. They may, you know, coming out of the, the Rolls Royce, coming out of the limos, having the apartments, you know, in the skyline and all that stuff. But that's not what generally most of the world lives their lives. They live it like you and I do, where we take kids to school with one shoe on or we forget to pack lunch or we do, you know, we're just, we're doing, that's the life that we're living. We're not perfect individuals. So we should stop at, especially in real estate. I know it's, we want to put on a good, like, Hey, I'm a professional. You hire me and don't get me wrong. There's all wrong with that, but you're going to attract the clientele you want to attract. Right. And so you need to, you need to be yourself because at the end of the day, there's so much fake out there, especially in our industry with people putting on and that's not the people that are, and that's not the, the, that's not the perception we want for our industry, real people that, and that's honestly why the people that, you know, are throwing stones at that agents or mortgage at our profession, the people complaining about agents getting paid too much as far as commission and all that other good stuff. All of that is we've allowed that to happen from bad players in our industry. And so we need to stay pick up a black and let's just be real. Let's be fun. Let's be, let's, let's have that commonality with the average consumer. Now, again, if you're in the luxury market, you know, you have to be a luxury, you know what I mean? Like, but, but you know, generally that's not all of the industry, you know, it's, it's you know, a percentage. It's, it's, it's a percentage, but it's not everybody. <laughs> oh, right. Not. So, so just be, be yourself and be human. And that's, what's really going to attract people because not just our industry, but you know, with, with influencers out there, with the Kardashians, with reality TV, everyone is doing that fake version of themselves and everyone just needs to start kind of being who they are. Uh, I love, I love the magic mic. As I tell people all the time, yeah. I am the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least <laughs> amount of hair. Yet I do video every single day because yeah. people don't care about how I look. But then yeah. I also point out the fact: Do you really think people want you to show up and look better than them? Yeah, like true. Yeah. 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 And, you know, oh, yeah, especially if, if, if you the drop dead gorgeous woman and with the insecure wife. No, you really don't want to be cuter than the wife. <laughs> and so uh, people want information. And if you solve their problems, they're going to like you and embrace you. Exactly. And, and, and I think that we need to to solve problems when we talk talk about that level of content. Uh, I was talking to a young gentleman uh, who was that Cal, and he was a former pastor and he says people identify with pain and they identify with imperfection because only 1% of the entire world's population makes over six figures. Yep. He said, so it's more people who can identify with being broke than being rich. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay. So I changed the content that I was delivering and I've noticed a substantial increase in the level of engagement when you think about the problem, not, mm -hmm. not the, um, the, the glossy side of it, but what did you have to do to get there? Because that's what people, they like, yeah, I can identify. You said kid going to school with, with one shoe. I'm talking about kids going to school with Mitch Mac shoes and socks. And <laughs> yeah. that's not how you bought them, right? You bought them yeah. to be a mate. And then you're like, well, that's the combination today. Yeah, yeah. ma. That's yeah. why I needed two different pair of Air Jordans. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and so, you know, it's not to be uh, like everyone else, and you have to differentiate yourself. So I'm consistently asking agent, what is their unique selling proposition? But I yeah. love how you've taken that, and it's all local, local, local. So you talked about TikTok. Yep. Um, I have TikTok on my phone. It's mm -hmm. kind of like Snapchat to me. I still need to figure it out. Uh, I read an article the other day. It says that TikTok is the best editing app for Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, and I could see that because it would make the yeah. content unique. Mm -hmm. It would be a little different in that marketplace. Uh, when, as an agency, what are the tools that you tell your clients they need to have? If it was something that I needed to download on my computer or, or on my phone, what, what, what do I need? Two, three things to be successful in 2020. It's like a duh, like you don't use this duh. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I come at it from a marketing perspective, but so like, so I'll keep it there as far as like branding and social media and stuff like that. So one, one app, well, one service I use, and it's not, a, it's not an app on their, on your phone and it's, it's called Snappa. It's kind of like Canva, except all it does is real quick and easy photo editing. And so like with Canva, you have all these like different formats and you can do these flyers and stuff like that. But in the day, you just want a simple way for you to just pop out some simple, social graphics. And, and here's another thing for LinkedIn, for Facebook and for, um, 
uh, for Instagram. All you need to do is what they call the one-to-one -one ratio, 1080 by 1080. You don't need to do the different sizes. It doesn't matter. Square looks best. Square is looked at best. So just use 1080, 1080 across those three platforms. It does not matter. Yes, there's a different version. Uh, if you go like, hey, well, I'm going to do this on um, – uh, you know, LinkedIn, because LinkedIn has a different size. Facebook has a different size. Instagram has always been square. But guess what? It all looks the same. It looks great on desktop. It looks great on mobile. You don't have to do too much. But I use Snappa a lot. It's very cheap month to month. I think it's like 20 bucks or $25 a month. It's really easy to just throw your logo on stuff. It has a ton of backgrounds that you could do a lot of a lot of cool tools to do it. Very easy to use and very, very simple. So I always recommend that for, cause we're always doing like, you know, stuff like, you know, doing graphics and things like that, some simple stuff. So that's one, another one that I use is, is, is actually kind of quiet about it. I don't promote it a lot because to me, I think it's like my secret weapon, but it's called Capwing and that's K-A-P-W-I-N-G. And you could do memes in there. You could do transcriptions. Honestly, this is an app that, and it's not on your phone. So that's another thing you have to do it on, on your desktop. But like the, this is this is the one of those quiet things that um, some of us in marketing use if we're smart because it does all these different tools, transcriptions, it does memes, it has all these templates, super simple to use. Um, it videos and all that other good stuff. So that's that's another one that to me is like if you're doing any type of content, you got to have these two. Um, Adobe Spark is another good one. That's an app on your phone. Um, Over is a great app to O V E R on your phone. Another uh, great editing. And th these are the things that I use the most in what I'm doing. And from an agent's perspective, if you want to throw in a quick, nice listing, throw uh, do a quick cut out of yourself and, and all that other good stuff to me, snap a, if you want to do something fun and memorable, have the little, you know, uh, you know, have the little, uh, um, uh, uh, transcription video and, and do some other things. Cap wing is a great, a great editor uh, for that. But, uh, but like you had mentioned, like I, I've used um, like Bitmoji to do some things that I would add into other, other areas of, of design. Um, same with TikTok. It's a great, great editor uh, to do videos on, especially for like stories and things of that nature. So that that's what I would say as far as like tools to have ones that are at least important to me. Um, you, but from, you know, for me, it's like you just want to, you want things that are just super simple to, uh, to do. Uh, if you're looking for a simple uh, one on your phone, Legend is another one that's, that's great. It's just simple with, uh, um, you know, words and a nice little animated, uh, but also um, one that um, uh, Katie Lance got me on a long time ago is Word Swag. Uh, Word Swag is another uh, great app to have. So to me, I'm all about the creative, right? I mean, it's what I do. But on, but the reason why is because that's what's going to stop the content in your uh, you know in your feed, right? That's going to stop people from. <laughs> thumb, you know, thumb, uh, thumb stopping content, you know, stop the scroll. It's the imagery and the visual that's going to stand out. It most definitely is. Now I'm going to have to go use and download this cap wing. I, ha I don't have that. And uh, you've dropped several nuggets. So I have a, a lot of homework <laughs> and I'm, I'm definitely going to quote you uh, in my class because that first, I just got to start asking people, right? Yep. <laughs> you know, is this your, is this your profession? Like, duh, that means you're supposed to do something about it, right? Yeah. You want to be the best in your profession. Yeah. Jason, if people don't know what to do, how to do it, how do they connect with you and hire you to help them? So, uh, so, so Shred Media, we're, we're an agency, uh, so we really only deal with like big lenders. But what we did is because we got that question quite a bit from a lot in real estate. It's like, hey, for me, the singular agent or the small brokerage or the small loan officer in it, or one that, you know, d doesn't do the big stuff, like how can we learn from what you did? And so the cool thing is about, uh, you know, with the, uh, Josh Pitts, who's the founder of Shred and mine, is we both built a personal brand. Like that's what we're doing today isn't what we got into this business for, right? My background is in technology. I wasn't a marketing person. Person. I didn't learn. I didn't go to school for marketing. That wasn't what I did, but because I just, it just fit naturally and I was, and I liked it and had a passion for it. Again, I, am I in this business for legacy? And I am, I went and learned Gary V heard Gary V speak, uh, speak, you know, bought his books, other, other speakers and stuff like that. I wanted to learn. So, um, so what we've done is we're, and actually it's, we're, uh, I don't know when this podcast is coming out, but on uh, November 14th, we are launching what we're calling our Shred AI Mastermind and AI we're, we're stands for attention and influence. And what this is, is this, these are um, uh, 
a, what we're calling um, learning paths, and then each learning path has an action plan so that they can learn from. And so we're we we're starting off very basic with branding, um, how to how to build email lists using like quizzes, something that I just talked about to a bunch of agents in Wisconsin, um, stuff that really that we that so Josh and I we learn all of our techniques from outside of our industry because honestly that's what works and what we do in our industry is too too tunnel vision into what we do every day and, and it, you know it just there's no nothing different everyone's doing the same thing so we we learn from that from how to build a brand how to do video so actually we have a great we have a couple great um guest uh, 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 professors or lecturers, whatever you want to call them. So uh, Karen Carr uh, is doing, uh, did a YouTube uh, video course for us. Trish uh, 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 Lito did uh, a Facebook live video course from us. I'm doing stuff. Josh is doing stuff. So this is um, a, a part of a, a broader uh, thing that we're doing, but November 14th, we're launching the shred AI mastermind. Um, um, service that uh, you could go in and, and it's very, it's very inexpensive. I think we're going to, for, for just like the, the courses that you could go through the, the action plans and the learning paths. Uh, I think it's gonna be like 47 bucks a month, month to month, you know, do as, as long as you want. Again, it's on us to provide the value. So as long as you're providing value, you'll continue to stay into it. And then we're going to have an accelerator group, which is going to have like calls and, and you know, we're going to have like guest speakers and stuff like that. That will be a little bit more high ticket item. But at the end of the day, this is just a mastermind for those of you to le simply learn like, hey, I'm going to build a landing page. I don't even know where to start. Even if I'm using a service that gives me a landing page, I don't know what I'm looking at. You're just kind of assuming that they're giving you the best thing. So we have, you know, that's why we actually have that for free now. So you could kind of get an idea of what we're going to be talking about. But it's basically like for a landing page, this is all you need to care about. This is the things you need to focus on. When they mention, you know, anything like in marketing speak, this is what they're talking about. This is what you're meaning. Because we know for the most part, a lot of agents and loan officers want done for you services, right? And what there's pros and cons to that. And I get it like, you know, with your business, but at the same time, like if you are going to use a done for you service, then you need, to, you should know as much as you can about that topic so that you're not, cause there's a lot of them, you know, in our industry, we're the low hanging fruit. So everyone is, is like, got a new course, got a new thing, got a new whatever to what, and that's great new product. But like we, one is with shred. We also try to like, you know, and we don't do affiliate relationships. So we say, Hey, this is a great website provider. Use them. Um, we don't get any money for, for promoting them. We just want you guys to win. So we're, but then we, we do our cater, our marketing around using that particular service. Cause we're like, look, we know you're not going to probably do this yourself. So you're probably going to use a service. If you do use this one and this is how you make the most out of it. And so that's what we're getting the most is I get I, every, every day I get a message saying, Hey, I signed up for this $3,500 course but I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know where to start. And so we're the kind of that foundation. And then there'll be advanced stuff that people, if they want to take the next step and, and learn it, then fantastic. If not, then we're going to give you, you know, up-to-date information on like landing pages, on like creating a, a customer avatar and what that even means and how that looks and um, doing lead magnets, how to create content, how to curate content, how to do video, um, you know, or, you know, how to, you know, how to, you know, to start off using Instagram, how to do with uh, how to do TikTok, how to do Facebook, how to do LinkedIn, just all these things that that we're and we're and we're we're teach we're training you. We're, well, we're going out there and learning from people that are the experts in it, but also we're using based off of like what we've done ourselves, right? To to figure out how to use these. But that's going to be our AI mastermind with learning paths and action plans, very broken down, very simple. Um, from when I started doing courses last year and, and, and really tried to just throw the book at everybody and just say like, yeah, this is the advanced stuff. And then realizing that's just too much. It's just too much information. They just need this, this simplistic stuff to start. And then if they have more questions or they want to go deeper, we'll have that path for them too. But really it's like the most question I get 99.9% .9 of the time is how do I start? right? Where do I start? And then how do I make the most out of it? If I do decide to get a coach or if I do decide to pay for, uh, you know, one of these lead generation, whatever, it's just so that they don't, so they go in there with their eyes wide open, right? Like a car, right? You should know that a flux capacitor isn't something real on an automobile. So like, I don't know how to work on my car. I don't know how to do, like I, I take it into the shop, but at least I know enough to know that if the guy's like trying to screw me over on, you know, what, what it needs or something like that, that at least know, and that's generally what this is going to be. But you could absolutely like the $2 a day strategy is going to be in there, you know, like how to learn from that. Like all of these things will be in there for you to learn from, for you to actually help grow your, and we, and we call it attention and influence is because it, it's all about 
the difference between what we're doing and what everyone else does with their courses and not to say that their courses are bad or anything. They all fulfill a need and, and some of them are fantastic. But what we think is missing is, 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 the, is the first step and that is to become digitally relevant and, re, and remain digitally relevant in, to today's consumer. So that's what our Shred AI Mastermind is about. Whoa, so Shred AI and then you also have the Shred Agency and you're going to start at the very beginning and at the end of the day, they need to dominate that local marketplace. Yes, absolutely. Wow. And, that, and that's what the mastermind's about because and the reason and people, you know, I always get this like, well, it needs to be like 300 bucks because some people were just think it's too cheap. And, and then so what I say is like, look, we monetize as an agency, like we, we don't like, this is why it doesn't need to cost a lot. This isn't a, this isn't a huge revenue generator for us, right? It's just going to pay the bills for everything that we put out there, the people that we bring in to speak and all, and, and to do um, other courses and other stuff like that to give you the best, but we monetize other places. So we don't need to charge 500, what other people are charging for their courses because this isn't going to be a huge revenue generator for us. Um, so, but and at the end of the day, we want people to win and we know too many people have paid thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of dollars each month for these things that don't end up moving the needle for them. So we're, we, we need to, you know, we, we need to be true to who we are at shred. And that again, that's the champion, the local expert. We don't do that by fleecing them. Um, for stuff, we, we do that by providing value. Excellent. Jason, I really appreciate your time and all the nuggets that you provided. I am sure people are going to want to dig in deeper on the $2 a day strategy and how to dominate their local marketplace. Thank you for being here. Marky, thank you for having me. It's been a a great conversation. And uh, again, just uh, it's it's been fun. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. So just to be able to have this conversation, (laughs) it's, it's been fun for me. I appreciate it. Have a great one.